that uh, Hertz is, or excuse me, yeah, it's, it's frequency is Hertz, which is cycles per second, excuse me. So this is second, cycles per second, and 2 pi is radians per cycle. So what you end up at the end with is radians, which is which is the unit that phases measure. When, when you see that the signal arrives at the sign 2 pi f t, for example, are we saying that like when the signal is going at any certain time, that's what the wave point phase is? So That's what, the what what is this term under the under the uh, under the cosine measure? What it measures is phase. So really, what I'm saying, if I put two pi ft in here, is I'm saying the phase of the signal is varying proportional to t. Yeah, I mean the meaning. That's the first sign. Yeah. Well, what we're putting inside is just <coughs> how the signal is at any instant time. Uh, we're traveling with speed c. That's right. And if it takes like five seconds to get to that point, it will arrive at 2 pi 5, 2 pi f times 5. That will give us the phase. That's right. OK. Um, so if we have um, a signal, We have sine 2 pi f. Um, so here is the uh, here is the fading term. 2 sine 2 pi f. Um, oops, sorry. I got the wrong formula here. 2 cos pi f d1 minus d2 over c. And I want to look at some frequency that that's uh, slightly away from this one. And I look at two cos pi f plus delta f so d1 minus d2 over c. So I can expand that a little bit. I can write two cos pi f. D1 minus D2 over C. So that's my original fading term plus pi delta F D1 minus D2 over C. So basically, the argument as to whether this is a significant difference or not boils down to whether delta F is large with respect to the delay. To, or excuse me, uh, with respect to the, the time difference. Yes. What are we doing here, Chief? So what we're doing. Uh, so how, where did we come from? We said um, I wanted to know whether uh, adjacent frequencies were being affected the same way by fading, and in particular, I wanted to know whether uh, adjacent frequencies within my bandwidth were being affected. So if I substitute in the bandwidth for delta f, so basically looking at the Fourier transform, I will have frequencies from fc to fc plus b and fc to fc minus b uh, that, I'm, that I'm transmitting at. What I want to know is, are these affected by roughly the same, uh, roughly the same fading? In other words, um, does this cosine change very much over this range? So what I can do is I can substitute in bandwidth for delta f and ask, uh, is that changing very much? So I'm not going to I'm not going to answer that question uh, quantitatively, but what I'm going to say is clearly, uh, if delta f times d1 minus d2 over c is large. In some sense, then um, then uh, the fading term will be significantly different. On 
the other hand, if delta f d1 minus d2 over c is small, then uh, the fading terms, the fading will be roughly the same. Small, that could mean on the order of uh, 10 to the minus 3, something like that. Large, that would, I'd say, be on the order of 1. Because if you think about uh, how quickly cos changes, uh, this argument under the cos goes through a complete cycle every 2 pi radians. So probably something on the order of uh, 10 to the minus 1 would be significant. Something on the order of 10 to the minus 3, 10 to the minus 4 would not be significant. So if this happens, if it's large, Call that frequency selective fading. If this happens and it's small, we call that flat fading. And it's flat from the perspective of, of, the, of the Fourier transform. In other words, uh, the effect on all the frequencies is flat. In this case, it's again from the perspective of transform. Some frequencies are affected more than others. Any questions on that? Why would it be significantly different? So this, remember this, this doesn't contain, uh, this, this doesn't contain uh, an, an oscillating term. So this is just, this is basically your amplitude. This is uh, like I've taken out the term that contains the, the, the actual signal, and this is just um, uh, this is just how the signal is scaled as a result of the fading. But it could go back to the same because it's a constant rate. So if it was really big, it can go back to the same value. The point is we want we want it to be about the same. We don't want it to go through. Uh, like, like, if this changes by 0.1 or 0.2 or 0.3, it's a constant, right? Yeah. So. So you can't really detect. Here's cosine. Yeah. Okay. So if if um, I carefully structured all of my uh, all of my reflectors so that one was here, and one was here, then yeah, you're right. But uh, generally, I can't do that. And my my only concern is whether if if this is a very very small number, then uh, let's say I'll see a reflection there, right there. here in the cosine, right. and one over there. These will be very close together. So you're talking about small, that it would be in the sense that. That's right. So that it doesn't that it doesn't affect this term under the cosine very much, because in that case, uh, the amplitudes uh, with respect to that frequency change won't be significant. So, so the first term is a function d of delta d over c. The second term is a function of delta d over c. So just yes. like mathematically. Conceptualize that uh, whenever one's big, the other one is going to change the other one in a significant way that's also going to be big, you know what I mean? It's like right. both so, of the same value that we're right. trying to isolate. So here we have, uh, I mean, the point is that here we have the center frequency of C, right? Yeah. Which I'm illustrating over here. And I'm asking, uh, what's the effect on something close to that FC plus delta? So this is the fading that occurs at the original point, and this is the fading uh, that occurs right. at the next point. So the only difference between these two terms is this right. delta. Right. That's right. 